Okay, so looking at the second part, which is one-sided limits, basically the examples we've looked at so far have been all the same old functions that we're familiar with, right? So are these, except we've sort of split it up, split one function up into two sections. So the first one we can see by looking at it is like a chunk of a parabola, right? And the bottom one is a linear equation. So both things that we're familiar with, but we haven't usually looked at them together as one function. So that's okay because kind of like what you did with domain and range, you see here that it's been split up into two different parts. So we have, oh, I hate that it does this. Um, we have, no, let me try a different color that's gonna make it better. Good enough. Um, so it's split up into two different parts here, which just makes it a little easier for us to work with. So um, we want to find the limiting behavior as x approaches 1. Find the limiting behavior. as x approaches 1. Okay, so to do this or to look at this, let's split this up. So I'm going to basically color coordinate it so we can keep track of what's going on here. Um, but basically, again, you probably don't need to do this. I'm doing this so that it's super clear in your notes. I'm going to look at some values for the first part that are less than 1 and then look for the y values that go along with that. And it really doesn't matter. Again, we could pick whatever we want to for the values. So you can take your pick, but right now, just to make it quick, I'm going to give you some. So maybe I think of 0.9 because it's the next one over um, and I would get 0 0.81. Then maybe I do 0.99 and I get 0 0.9801 and I do 0 0.999 because again, that's what limits are. We're looking at behavior approaching a certain point. So 0 0.998001. Okay, so judging by this, we kind of would have known anyways by looking at this and saying, okay, what happens if I just plug in one? If I just plugged in 1, I'd get that it's, it's approaching this value of 1. We can see that pattern from the x values that we plugged into our table of values as well. But that's basically what's going on there. If I want to do the same type of thing with the linear portion of our graph, so just for the part where x is greater than 1, so I can do the same type of thing here, x is greater than 1, then my y value would be 3 minus x. You could write x and y there if you want to. I'm just showing you exactly where it's coming from. And I do the same t sort of thing. If I'm looking for something bigger than 1, maybe I go to 1.1 to start with, and I get 1.9. Then maybe I want to do 1.01, .01, and I get 1.99. I'm only doing this because it's our first time going through this. There's no way I want you to sit there and do this each time. So no, you don't have to do this. 1.001 just to really solidify this and make sure that we get it, we see the pattern of behavior. We can see what's happening as we go in this direction, as we get closer and closer to one. Um, we can see that our value is approaching two here. So it's the same thing as what we've been doing, but you see the pattern of what's going on here. So I'm going to you already have this, so maybe I'll shrink it so we can have it all. Um, we see that the limit as x approaches 1 from the negative side for f of x here is equal to 1. And here we see the limit as x approaches 1 from the positive side, so that's the blue part here, of f of x is equal to 2. So clearly they are completely different. 
So this isn't one of those scenarios where it was continuous. Remember with continuous, they're connecting. So clearly there's a gap or there's a jump in our graph if we were to graph this out. So what is going on here? Well, let's put this into, or let's sort of summarize. We have two separate one-sided limits. That's kind of like the, the root x graph that we already looked at or talked about in the last example. The two-sided limit for the limit as x approaches 1 for f of x, we would say it does not exist. Clearly, because by definition of limit, um, they would have to equal the same value. And here we have 1 and here we have 2. So we know that that's the case. Um, and so if we were to quickly sketch or graph this out, we would get something that looks kind of like this. We would have basically a half of a parabola or a chunk of a parabola that ends off at this point. Oh, I should have color coded it. Whoops. Let's do that in pink. And let's do the other portion in blue. So we have a graph that would end up sort of looking like this. And although this is the first time that we're looking at limits from this perspective, we've seen graphs like this, right? Again, I think the most familiar or common place you saw this was when you were talking about domain and range. And I see some people saying no, but that was probably in grade 10. So it's been a while. So perhaps you've forgotten, but you for sure have seen graphs that are some version of this where there's a jump or there's a gap between them. There's an open circle, closed circle, da da da. Uh, the only difference is now we are looking at um, limits. 